Okay, so now let's take a look at the audio preferences. So we go to edit and preferences, and this time we need the audio page. So you can use the drop down menu or the scroll keys and just get to the audio page. So first of all, we have the master tune. Now this is a global adjustment that will adjust the tuning of every device within reason. Now as default, it's set to 440 hertz, and this is known as standard tuning. So unless you've got a, a good reason why you need to adjust this, you should never really have to adjust it. The audio card driver, this will give you a list of all of the audio drivers that are installed on your system. Now it's always best to use the ASIO drivers if your sound card supports them, as these will give you the best performance and the lowest latency. Now it's always recommended that you should always keep your drivers up to date. So every now and again, just find out the manufacturer of your sound card, just log onto their website and just see if they've got any updates available. It's always important to keep them up to date. So, okay, so if you've got ASIO drivers, then you should always select those. If you don't have, have ASIO drivers, then you, you should select DX. And if you don't have DX, you should choose MME. The sample rate, this is the playback sample rate of Reason. Now, you will have different options here if you have different sound cards. Uh, but for 44.1 kilohertz, that is CD quality. And so that should be good enough for most people. Now, the buffer size, because I'm using an ASIO driver, I, I cannot control the buffer size in this window. Uh, when you're using ASIO drivers, you have a control panel down here. And this control panel will open up the software for the ASIO driver. So if I click on this, you see a window pops up for my Line 6 audio card. And I have control of the buffer size here. I'll just close that down for a minute. Now, if I change these... Well, I'll try and change the audio card to a DX driver. You'll see that I have, I now have control of the buffer size. Now, before I talk about the buffer size, you need to know what latency is. Now, latency in an audio sense, it's the delay that you sometimes hear when you hit a note on your keyboard, and there is a de delay from when you actually hear that note in the speakers. So that's known as latency. Now, you need to get the latency as low as possible, and you alter the latency with the buffer size. So you can see there the latency at the moment is 14 milliseconds and as I increase the buffer size then the latency also increases. So you may think well why can't you just put the buffer size to a minimum because that will give you the lowest latency. Well when you lower the buffer size you're putting more and more strain on your CPU. So if you're playing back a Reason song that's got lots of say subtractors and maelstroms that use a lot of CPU power then you're going to notice uh, some problems in the playback. Okay, the, the audio may cut out completely, you may have pops and crackles. So it will take a bit of experimenting, but basically you need to get the buffer size as low as possible while still keeping good audio quality, but also getting the latency as low as possible. So now we have latency compensation. If you're using Reason with an external MIDI device, then the playback sometimes will not be in perfect sync. That's once again because of latency. And this compensation here, you can adjust the latency to actually try and get it to play back in perfect sync. The active channels, this will vary depending on what sound card you're using. My sound card just has these stereo outputs, so I have the two out of two. And up here in the audio hardware, you can see that I've got channels one and two. There's a green light which represents the two output channels. The clock source, this setting on mine is actually greyed out because I'm only using the one audio card. I'll just change that back. But if you're using more than one audio card, you have the option, well you have to tell Reason, which one will be the master and which one will provide the clock source. So that's what you use that setting for. Uh, the control panel, I've just explained that in when you're using ASIO drivers, this control panel will be lit up and that will take you to the control panel for your particular driver. The playing background, if I leave that ticked, and if I play a song in Reason, you'll notice that it continues to play when I minimize it. And so you can work on other packages with the song playing in the background. Now if I untick that preference, 
then it's quite obvious really if you play a song again and you minimize it okay then the playback will stop and the playback will start again as soon as you open up reason okay so that's down to personal preference and how you work with different packages okay so that's the audio page